Now, here's your hosts, The League Dad, Kevin, Mitchell, and Alistair. What's up, gamers, and welcome to another episode of the All In Podcast. I am The League Dad, and as always, joined by my buddies, my friends, my co-hosts. We've got Kevin Mitchell and Alistair. Thank you guys for being here, and uh, as always, I love talking League. Uh, we didn't have any games this past week, which is crazy because we're usually recapping what's happening, but we still had a bunch of, uh, you know, news to talk about, topics to talk around the league. Uh, so we're j- going to jump into all of that. I know Twitter's been going crazy lately, so has Reddit. So a bunch of uh, interesting things. Uh, but before that, how are you guys doing? What's up with you? What's going on in, in life right now? Um, doing mixed uh started my new job that's doing well Ooh, nice however so that was on monday which is yesterday however uh i don't have a val i don't have a non-expired passport slash driver license so Uh-oh. the little form you gotta fill when you start a new job like i was just like thinking like oh this is expired i should get it renewed and i'm like in the process of it but the government's not quick here in the u.s if you're like an international watcher yeah. like quick is like three to four weeks mm-hmm. so if i can't get some form of id figure out i might have to like pause my new job start oh no and take a unintended vacation so <laughs> I, I we'll see what happens next week this saga will continue but i'm like exhausting everything right now to try to figure out a solution because the government takes way too long to do any of this stuff but is your would your job be okay with that? Like it's not tech, uh, you know. Like they're they're fine with it in the sense of like I'll have my job, but I might have okay. to like briefly be terminated and then rehired because oh, okay. legally I can't be hired without this. It's called an I nine right. form, yeah. Without this documentation, because this is how they know you're like allowed to work in the U.S. However, I have a work history and I've already submitted a valid birth certificate. I'm a citizen, so it's like I'm like. How do you think I worked until now? So, <laughs> yeah, it's more like them just following the law, you know. Being a rules player. are rules, Kevin. We can't break yeah. the rules, man. I'm just kidding. Yeah, uh, my well, employers are also like based in Canada, so they're very nice and probably don't want to oh, break good. rules and hey, stuff. Man. So, yeah. Like Alistair, I got denied from a bar. Nice. I got denied oh, from a bar with an expired license. Yeah, that was loud because uh, it expired on my birthday last year, and then uh, I tried to go out to a bar like a few days after, and I got denied. I was like, really? Okay. It's been a it few was days, guys. Do you think I like made this up? Yeah. yeah, it was pretty. It was a bummer. I, I, I don't know. Maybe like I bought it like illegally or something. I don't know. And they just try to get them over. It was really. You, stupid, it's though. a compliment. We both look yeah. young. So. Exactly. Yes. Well, I had a so one more quick story about expired licenses. We had drove for my birthday. Me, a couple buddies, and my wife, like five or six hours away uh, to West Virginia. There's one lone casino out there, uh, and nothing else. So you're literally driving through like woods and no population. All of a sudden there's a casino. We get there. We're about ready to go in. Excited. Everybody's coming in, showing their IDs. My wife's ID is expired and they won't let her in. And so we drove six hours and there's nothing else to do around there because it's just a casino. So we went to the gas station, got uh, like some beer and went to the hotel room and just uh, hung out. But it was uh, (laughs) a man. I guess you got to follow the rules, <laughs> Wait, man. What a bummer. Was, was this recently? It was about four or five years ago. It was before COVID and stuff, but, but yeah. That's crazy. You yeah. guys are yeah. like way past. Well, I actually don't know how old. Wow, man. Chill. I'm, I'm old. Just saying, like, <laughs> Come on, Kevin. You know I'm old. <laughs> well, no, no. I'm just saying like it should be at they a should, glance. Yeah. It's like. Uh, it's, I don't know. I'm not yeah. old enough to have an expired driver's license yet. Here so. we are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Wait, you get be old enough. No, if not you yet. Got your uh, it's, it's expiring. Your... In, it, it's expiring in 2023. Oh. Okay. Also, it would depend when he got his license. Well, I got yeah. it when I when I turned 16. Okay. Oh, okay. So. Yeah. Well, all of that to say, Five expired, years. expired. Get it renewed. <laughs> okay, Alistair, how are you yeah, doing, get my your friend? Stuff renewed, y'all. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <my God. laughs> I, I'm chilling. Uh, honestly, been a pretty slow week. Not much has happened, to be honest. Cool. Just, right. Been chilling. Nice. Nice. That's good. Schoolwork and stuff. Nothing wrong with that, man. Living life. (laughs) Yeah, uh, uh, that's, cool. that's what I'm saying. As long as nothing bad's happening, then hey, that's good, man. You're you're here. You're still uh, alive, well, and uh, playing league, so that's good. Mitchell, what about you, my friend? Yeah, I'm doing pretty good. Uh, I'm chilling. Um, I feel like something noteworthy happened, but I can't remember it. Oh, <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> um, I I tried playing Fortnite. It's actually a pretty fun game. 
weirdly oh, enough. Nice. Is yeah. this the first like time? The no building mode or the regular mode? The non-building mode. Building mode is okay. way too hard. Yeah. Man. Oh my yeah. goodness. I, can't I cannot that, build. Dude. I can't do it. But I just tried the normal build because uh, some friends were playing it. Um, like, And it was like surprisingly similar to League. And like you have like a laning phase where you kind of you know, mm -hmm. build up and gather up some stuff to get stronger. Then you start fighting a lot. Yeah. It was mm. like, yeah, it's, it's fun. It's um, not as bad as I thought it was going to be, actually. So, I don't know. I guess it's just another game that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is pretty neat. And it is, you know, pretty big game. But the, the yeah. thing was always, for me, the hard part was the building. I hated that. Yeah. Like, just as a game without the building... Yeah, I like the concept, and I do agree. Like, it's pretty fun, you know, building up, trying to find strategic places to go, and then finally shooting it out. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, a lot of cool, fun and concepts there. They have really cool gimmicks, too, that they yeah. change every time. Like, right now, you can turn to a metal blob, and you just bounce around like a ball. Yeah. It's, like, so stupid, but it's really funny. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I, Why I feel did... like League could do more stuff like that. Like, remember yeah. when you could turn into a gromp? That was just a great time in League. Mm. No, it, dude, it would break time. the game. It would, it would actually break the game when the event's over. They're like, you just randomly yeah. turn to a grump at a pro match. And like, oh, <laughs> yeah, that'd be so funny. <laughs> <It's done. laughs> that would be amazing. Oh. All right. Well, glad to hear everybody's doing good. I have my, so I, you know, I know I had Golden Girls hat last time. Now I have a Baby Yoda hat oh, on. Oh, Baby Yoda. So maybe that'll rock be my you. thing. Just rock a different hat every time. I don't know. Uh, anyways, uh, let's talk about some drama because, you know, League is never short of drama. Uh, yet another CEO in hot water. Uh, we're talking about Carlos from G2. And if you're anywhere around the League scene, I'm sure you've seen him on Twitter. I've sure you've seen him on Reddit. Um, the whole thing unfolding. Uh, but essentially, does anybody want to kind of TLDR the, uh, what happened here for anybody who may not yeah, have uh, heard I it? I can cover it on like right. a very basic level. It essentially, Carlos was seen. I mean, it might have been he posted his own social media post. Uh, yeah, and he yeah. was in a picture with a, I believe he actually is streamed. He was streaming with somebody, a man named Andrew Tate. Mm -hmm. uh, he's fairly notorious for multiple things. But I think the simplified version would be that he has pretty hot slash controversial takes on a lot of things uh namely some of them including like how women should be treated and that generally is not condoned especially publicly right so mm -hmm. i wouldn't condone it and i think carlos saying he kind of doubled down after people called him out on it he said that like you know i um <clears throat> i choose Nobody will ever be able to police my friendships. I draw my line here. I probably with whoever the fuck I want is what he said. Uh, <laughs> soon after. That's, that's a good one. That's nice. Uh, <laughs> and the, the beautiful part about that tweet, not the tweet itself, is the fact that he apologized about 15, 16 hours later. Yeah. So something along the lines of like, oh, many G2 fans were let down this weekend by um, my po like what I did, what I said. And, you know, I wanted to make it clear that I'm always standing for absolute equality of opportunity, regardless of where you're from. That's what gaming is about. And like he, he's kind of apologized, but he left that like nobody will be able to police my friendships tweet like pinned as that apology was still like underneath. There's some other little details. Don't need to get into it. It's just a lot of drama. Carlos, anyone who's been in the scene long enough knows that Carlos is a divisive figure. Mm -hmm. When he was a pro player, he was very flame. Like he's very out there. He's very like, funny in some ways, but also very controversial. He would say some very weird things. Some, and he's been doing that from time to time. Like the perks yeah. is my son's favorite uncle thing. Uh, when he said he would never screw over perks. So mm -hmm. that's that's the synopsis. I'll I'll drop the ball over to one of y'all. You guys can take it from here. Yeah, reactions. What do you guys think? <laughs> so I mean, honestly, I really have no idea who Andrew Tate is. Honestly, I thought his name was Adrian. So I, that shows <laughs> about how much I know about him. Um, I just know that he is not popular uh and he's been he was like deported from the uk or something like that and had had a bunch of charges put against him somewhere for like sex trafficking or something i don't know yeah i i, I, I don't like, know a lot about yeah. him i just know that he is not popular and uh <laughs> carlos is uh I'm, I'm gonna coin a new term he, he's regging his career right now <laughs> oh ouch yeah yeah, he uh, he's like an accused sex trafficker. I don't think he's actually been arrested or convicted of anything. It's pretty bad. He's a he was a kickboxer slash internet personality, according to Google. So it's it's a pretty bad look for G two. I think. I mean, it's a pretty bad look for any person. 
uh, G- Carlos's ex-wife, who's also like the mother of their kid, came out with a thing saying that um, he's never been misogynistic like around her, mm. or in, she sees him as a good person. But it's like it feels all very PR, right? It's just mm, yeah. we don't really know what to say or trust. All we do know to say or trust is that CEOs are not normal people. Usually, they're kind of a little cuckoo in the head. They're kind of power hungry, little like oligarchy, like mad genius type of sitting in the chair, twirling their mustache, showed a character, and like Reggie was definitely like bad, but in a comical sense, and that he would fire you and tell you you're stupid and stuff. Like that's pretty bad, but it's like you know, this is bad. This is like you're hanging out with an actual criminal. And I think it's kind of on a different level, um, and. The entire Twitter and the entire Reddit all pretty much lashed out against um, Carlos and G2. G2 ended up suspending Carlos for like eight weeks as their CEO uh, with no money being gained and stuff like that. Um, I don't know. Yeah, Carlos seems like he has like – there's this thing about like liked tweets and stuff. It doesn't seem like Carlos cares that much really. Mm-hmm. I don't think he's ever cared about public opinion. He knows that he is not – He's above the law in a sense, like not above like actual law, but above like league law, where if as long as G2 wins, he'll always come back and he'll always be able to stay in the scene, right? Riot did just recently deny or, or is rumored to deny their Valorant uh, franchising, but I don't think he's ever going to get removed from like LEC franchising unless he does something really stupid and actually illegal. So it's kind of it, it feels bad to just watch Carlos be smug about it. And not give a shit, <laughs> and then just keep you know carrying on with life, being a rich CEO. I mean, he so. he doesn't. Eight weeks pay is nothing when you're worth, uh, according to Google, 105 million dollars. Eight weeks yeah. pay, that's, <laughs> like, that's nothing, bro. He it does, doesn't matter. So be- yeah, I it's just you know, suck. I wish he was a better person. I guess that's what we can say. Yeah. <laughs> I think it extra sucks because like there are players that you just really want to support on g2 right there, there's caps there's steering pills there's broken blade like there's just people that you really respect that have been basically synonymous with the org's um name and you would like for example if g2 does come over and do really well i would like to get a jersey i mean like they've been around long enough where i'm like it's just part of history but at the same time you always have to remember like just like buying a tsm jersey you're like and then what's the CEO going to come out and do next? Yeah. <laughs> what am I going to be like associated with if I wear this in public? Like it's, you don't want to feel like that, but like there is a certain level where if he did actually come out and say something really bad as a fan, you're just directly associated with it. Like people will judge that at a, like an event or something. And it's, it's not fun for other parties. Uh, I do think that it is reassuring that most of the community, like usually on Twitter or Reddit, it's like, <clears throat> there's like if you start by controversial you'll see some like you know you'll see some takes that might gain some steam <clears throat> but this time i think it was pretty straightforward i think mo- for the most part it was fairly unanimous in terms of the like dude this is okay <laughs> like why are you hanging out with this person like some things are alleged but he has publicly said like women should be tools or whatever should be owned by men like it's, it's not great uh, i have to actually look at the quotes because i don't want to misquote the guy but this is just like it, there's very little positive things out there that I can see. Uh, I don't really want to delve too much into it though, because you know any news is probably just stuff that he um, it would just give him more not- notoriety. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's yeah. Uh, it's it's not it's not pretty. It's not pretty for the league scene. We uh, we're getting to a, a you know a place where uh, it's just we don't want to go there. We don't want to go anywhere well, close. Well, th- so this is the, this yeah. is what I want to pose the question to you guys because to me like yes obviously you know it's it's not a good look he shouldn't be hanging out with him or whatever but i guess the so this sets a big precedent right moving forward because essentially he's getting punished um for hanging out with somebody who a majority of people don't like right if you put it in that in that basic terms of what it is he's guilty by association because he hasn't he personally, as we know, according to his ex-wife or whoever, he is himself is not like that. Uh, you know, he's a little out there, can be controversial, but there's nothing to show that he has the same views that this Andrew Tate guy uh, has, or according to Alistair, Adrian Tate has. <laughs> but, <laughs> but but so here's what I'm so here's what I'm saying. And Kevin, you kind of mentioned it too. You were like, oh look, if G two, you know, for G two fans, 
like you know now with what the ceo does and because of all the drama and heat they're taking like now rocking my g2 jersey do i get also guilty by that association and like my 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 my, uh my uh i guess question is this like where do you draw the line like and is that enough of a precedent because again he's guilty by association but he technically hasn't done anything wrong reggie Mm -hmm. i would i would go on to say that he directly did things that were uh directly like uh bad for his company yeah like you know as far as him abusing players verbally yeah Yeah. bad towards people so and again like i'm on the side of twitter you know most of what twitter's saying like i i I don't like that he's doing that. I I hate the fact that he also said you can't pull you know police who I hang out with all this yeah, stuff. Like I hate that attitude. But from a precedent uh, point of view, like what do you guys think? Do you guys agree with that? Like if Riot takes him out of franchising, like that's crazy because that's huge. Like if they could do Valorant, they could do League. So I don't know. Yeah. Let, let me get your thoughts on that. Well, I I gotta I'm gonna take this first because I do think that one of the big signs that really makes me tick off and I think can subconsciously tick a lot of people off is everybody is making posts. Every single personality is saying misogyny is bad. This guy's bad. What he did is bad. What he says is bad, right? He's not saying any of that. He's not actually going out and saying misogyny is bad. He's saying, I let some people down, right? Don't play with my friends, yada, 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 right? He didn't go out and just defame the message that this guy is like known for. And I think that's, that's like a big problem. Like he's not being you know, a good person. Like, yeah, it's, um, it, it'd be so easy for him if he truly believed it to disenfranchise this guy, right? It's like, you should not, you are a bit of who you hang out with. I think that's, can be apparent in life, right? Just like in league, you are a bit of who your teammates are and your coach are and your staff are and your team are. So you are a bit of the people you hang out with. And if you intentionally want to post a picture of it with him, you're partially proud of it. Um, I think with the kind of social media following he has. So it's just all those things that line up together at the same time. I'm not saying he should get kicked out of franchising. He didn't do anything illegal or wrong or against the rules as far as I know. Mm -hmm. But in terms of liking the human being that is Carlos, then yeah, it's like way, way down. Oh, for sure. Yeah. But in Mm -hmm. terms of G2 and the company and league, which now I guess I'll talk about now is, yeah, I mean, doesn't have much to do with it. I wouldn't want to be associated with Riot, but it's like, if he's already franchised, you can't really do much. He didn't break any right. rules. If he did break rules, then kick him out. But yeah. as far as I yeah. know, hanging out with somebody is not enough grounds to, to break to kick you out. So whatever yeah. on that. Yeah. yeah. Like, I, I also agree. Like, you can't choose who, like, you, I don't think as a precedent, even if it's like a controversial person, unless these are like convicted like these I are like it's a war oh, criminal or something yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 if it's something that well okay i i still think that those take there are certain lines um it's still not he's not the one saying these things so it's not as bad i, I will definitely agree with that i will say that if you don't <clears throat> publicly condemn at least so, like i'm just not against this or that and just like make it clear right you know you're not saying that you agree with the things that this person's done for them, it's not that hard to do, right? I, ideally, I would like that to be sincere, but, you know, right. at the very least, do that, right? If your wife is the, your ex-wife is the one who's come out saying he's not a misogynist, like, I'm like, why hasn't he has said that? He's, he did say he stands for equality in all fields, and to their credit, they started an all-female yep. team recently, yep. like, a couple weeks before it's that, rough right? Rough timing, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not but, great. Yeah. Not great. Um, I would be a little concerned if I was an employee, but, you know... <laughs> he he could do better right uh right. so i think like for example if we were in a podcast and alistar wasn't here and we had harvey weinstein here like and i'm like yeah you know i mean i'm not harvey weinstein mitchell isn't leak that isn't so we're yeah. fine like, we're, why would you say we're the ones making the bad decisions he's we're not him right i'm not mm-hmm. saying that but i also don't condone condemn anything or you know put like distance that or say i'm i don't stand for that then you know people are going to judge that and while we can't tell you who your friend should be we can definitely decide how we judge you based on that's right that is our freedom um i will say there's no reason they should kick out g not no reason but there's not nearly enough reason to kick out g2 from lec what they can do is if they remove him from the or g2 from like the high priority list for franchising for valorant like that's I don't think that's enough to remove him, but I think if they look at like 
because G2 is just such an iconic organization. It's stable. It's one of the most successful esports orgs in Europe, if not just the world. Mm. Uh, that's probably not enough to get him out, but that is definitely a strike, right? And if enough drama happens and they're like, this is too much of a PR risk for Riot to stomach, they could just be like, you don't get into the first round of franchising. You might have to buy yourself in later on when you're on good behavior, right? And that, we mentioned this before about TSM franchising to Valorant. Um, this stuff costs a lot. This can be a lot of valuation mm -hmm. and just brand value. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I just, I, I don't think there's any like major punishment that needs to happen. I think they're, they're G2 did a small like PR punishment that's honestly irrelevant. But it's just kind of like, you can't, you can't really, it, well, on one hand, it's not like he's hanging out with someone that's just generally disliked. He's hanging out with someone who actually like spreads things that are genuinely harmful to people and have and has apparently caused a lot of issues with a lot of people. And that's very different than hanging out with like Tarzan, right? Like right. Mo most people just don't like Tarzan, Tarzan <laughs> but you're not going to you're not going to get canceled because you hang out with Tarzan at a party or something like that, like that, right? Uh like this this guy is like a legitimate problem apparently and i i do think like it would be okay if he i my my opinion is just like as the ceo or like a public figure uh that carlos is it's just a really stupid thing for him to do to just post it on social media it like i i feel like it would be okay i it wouldn't be like it's not it wouldn't be the same but he could hang out with him just like do it in private yeah. yeah, like just keep it to yourself. Yeah, he posted it himself, man. It's just hilarious. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he just wanted to out himself for fun. Like, <laughs> people don't people don't want to see this guy, but and like that's understandable with like what he's associated with. But putting him in a like in a public place, like parading around that you hang out with this guy, just isn't the move. Yeah, I think uh, it it was all downhill when social media came out because now like. Everything about a player and or, or a personality or a CEO, like they're so they cannot help but post stuff like online. Like whereas back yeah, in the dude. day when there wasn't any of this, you didn't know all the stuff that they were. You're just like, oh, he's running a successful org. That's probably all we know about him. And maybe the few things we yeah, see in interviews. You didn't but hear anything. <laughs> I mean, same thing with Reggie, right? He just tweets like with like why somebody take the phone away, somebody take his yeah. his Twitter account away. Uh, but yeah, so. I mean, just a lot of craziness. Uh, again, more CEO drama, unfortunately, in the esport scene. Uh, but let's move a little bit to the world's, uh, you know, news because a couple things happened. Uh, one is Lil Nas X taking over. I think uh, this is kind of cool for me because, you know, obviously a, a very uh, popular figure. I don't know much about him, but I do know that he's big and popular. And like any attention that can be brought onto our sport then i'm all for it i'm excited i saw the little video i loved it i heard a little teaser on the video but the song sounds pretty good to me uh but what do you guys think about this like you know i think riot we can all agree uh that their production value has gone up especially with the lcs 10 year anniversary and all that uh, good jazz uh but yeah this is pretty cool i think we're off to a right a good foot and uh i'm excited to see what's going on but what do you guys think i thought the video was good i thought it was like they usually try to like you know, be cool for the kids or whatever, and they right. miss the mark. And oftentimes, a lot of companies do it, not just Riot. Riot yeah, actually yeah. probably hits the mark more than the average. But I think they probably let, like, they let Lil Nas X, like, just do his thing. They probably let him do a lot of the decision making for this video. Like, it felt like you could feel a lot of personality and yeah. sass. Like, the nudier, like, meme was hilarious. <laughs> yeah. I, um, the, I'm not going to get into it too much, but I think it was really funny. If they ever did make that skin, which they wouldn't, but if they did, that would probably sell really well. Heck yeah. <laughs> and then get they're banned somewhere. Wait, no, is that... Are they, they're so making the skin. There's no way they're not going to make the skin. I mean, they gotta they do, make they're the going to make now. a ton of money, right? They got to make it, gonna it make now, it. Right? Yeah, I, mean, I think... I they mean, might, my theory might is they weren't going to make it, and then the video, like, the meme power got so strong, like, okay, it's going to be made. So one way or another, it got... Mm. Just give them a into bro, existence. It'll be fine. Yeah, he's either gonna be it's either gonna be made for worlds and stuff where mm -hmm. we get it, or we're gonna like not get it and then get it on April Fools or something. Like there's yeah. no way we're not getting it. No, you Come know on. what? 
The Nas <laughs> X, his his costume for when he does the presentation of World's Finals is gonna be a new year cosplay. Uh, <laughs> that would be oh good too. Goodness, that would be another, uh, Super Bowl later. Janet Jackson moment for people who grew up in the 2000s. Yeah, yeah. I I would be down. I would be so down. <laughs> I would be so down too. Yeah, I uh, saw so I think it was. What, what, what did you say? I was just going to say with the neuter thing, I forget who tweeted it, but they said, <laughs> I think they're like, neuter, uh, since when is Lily getting a, a new skin? Oh, <laughs> new deer. New deer. Yeah. I don't know. Dad joke, I guess. So I laughed. Lily getting a new skin. That was, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was, uh, I think it was I right in August. I saw that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, so I'm excited for the new uh, song. Uh, we kept on hearing like the little clips of it, and I thought it sounded good. Like, I don't listen to a lot of um, his work, but it just sounded good. And yeah. I most importantly, I think this is the right artist for the age group they're trying to target. They're trying to target mm -hmm. like some younger audiences and try to get them into our game. And it, at least it, either into esports as the first step, because this is an esports promo, but ideally into the game, because we really need people. I think League yeah. has actually a pretty good retention rate of like just long term players, but the new people trickle like went up with Arcane and then like they're trying to find their next like, how do we appeal to people, right? Mm -hmm. um and this is a good this is a good move whether it will do anything i have no idea like this is very hard to track those numbers but hopefully they'll we'll see the ramifications if it is successful yeah i mean i think definitely think it's interesting and i definitely am looking forward to the song mainly because a lot of the recent songs you've kind of just been able to throw them in the like if you take the music video and then you put that with the different song it just it just fits like cookie cutter so it's definitely going to be uh, unique. Mm -hmm. And I was, I, I kind of spent a lot of time trying to figure out uh, who was actually, like, you know, who was who going to be, um, like, who was going to be the artist to make the world song. Because usually they get someone from the region. So, like, for KDA, when it was in uh, Korea, they had, like, uh, some uh, K pop stars yep. or mm -hmm. that kind of thing. And. Honestly, for the life of me, I was I was gonna predict they do something with Snoop Dogg just because it's Snoop Dogg. He he, he has his hand in literally everything. Yeah, he does. That was my prediction. Um, though I definitely think this is gonna be interesting, and I'm looking forward to seeing uh more as it comes out for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it should be cool. Yeah, Lil Nas X is pretty dope. He's um, yeah, he's got some good music. He got really really big off of like one album which is crazy mm -hmm. it's kind of a one album wonder guy he's pretty new so i'm i'm excited for it he's also openly gay which is cool league has been going in a very uh gay friendly just lgb all those letters friendly yeah um <clears throat> so i think that's neat um yeah i hope it's good honestly the video reminded me, it was just the office it really was just an episode yeah. of the office a lot really of people funny. are doing that uh these days so it's cool uh, i mean it was to be honest, it was a little cringy for me at the beginning, uh, but it warmed up on me. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, this, they're going hard with The Office. They're, they're going really hard. But uh, every scene with Lil Nas X was actually pretty funny. Yeah. And then um, the other lady, she was all right. She wasn't the, she wasn't the worst. It was, it was fine. It was a good video. Uh, I hope the actual song slaps because they kind of teased it. And I thought it was fine, but it felt very, like, poppy catchy. So we'll see yeah. what the actual song is like. I hope it's, like more like his stuff you know because yeah. i think his music is actually pretty good um yeah we'll, we'll see uh i'm excited though because uh yeah this you know we're getting the zoomers in right this is the time we need all the zoomers to play league need all more the, like the, the jojo need, pions. yeah the more yeah, jojo pions, the more, jojos, jojos, I was say. more general snipers yeah. you know we need all these guys to come in and, and save na because uh, you know our boomers aren't doing it our our boomer yeah. teams are not <laughs> making it to Worlds, so we need new life. <laughs> we really do, though, because, uh, yeah, you're right. Like, the amount of young talent, like, because you can't technically say, like, a Blaze Olive is still young talent anymore. Like, he's been in the league for a while now, you know what I mean? Or even Palafox. <laughs> so yeah. we need new JoJo Pions. And uh, so if this, you know, this is a step in the right direction, let's let's keep doing it. Uh, all right. Let's not spend too much time on this, but it is Worlds related. Uh, but... Uh, for Valorant, they did change their world's format uh, to have double elim, and I know that's something that we as uh, League of Legends fans have been craving for so long now. Um, do you think, just real quickly, because we obviously all want it, uh, but why do you think Riot continues to not do it? 
or uh, find excuses for not to do it? Like, do you really believe there's not enough scheduling or enough time, you know, uh, because it just seems like it's doable in, in other games except for ours when we've been asking for it for so long. And do you think we'll eventually get it? So I watch Valorant a lot. I watched season one champs, which was as far as I remember, I believe it was also single Elo. Uh, and I watched this tournament for the most part. I think let's let's get into it real quick. Like what's really great about their format is like you can just see some really cool hero runs to the lower bracket. You can see um when you just have a bad best of five or a bad matchup. Like honestly, just some teams will beat other teams, just like IG lost to or IGB KT in 2018. Mm-hmm. KT would have beat like probably almost every other team in that tournament and got into the finals if there was a lower bracket, right? And we'll never see that world. So having more games is better. Having more ch- like one more chance so that it's not just based on flukes to get to the final is better. And why have they not implemented it? Um, part of the reason is, in my mind, is they needed to try it out themselves. Like Riot in my mind, always has to invent the solution, even if the solution's out there. So they have to be like, we invented this double elimination format. We tried it with BCT uh, Champions, which is our biggest tournament in Valorant at the end of the year, basically our worlds. We know everyone liked it. Everyone, lo- viewership was, it was all right. It was decent. So then we can put it in worlds. I don't think in t- until they did that, they were like super comfortable. All that being said though, We've had double elim in all of our regional leagues. So what is going on with mm-hmm. our worlds? Like there, I'm gonna cut it there. I, I'll just start yelling at Riot at this rate. <laughs> if, if He's I'm about to go to. off. Oh god. So I mean, I think I do think part of it, and th- this is some recent information I got from the Valorant team at my school, mm. where Valorant is a lot more competitive between regions. Like Brazil has really good teams, for example. Like a lot of the the like in league would be considered minor regions have like world's contenders mm. rather than league just being Korea, China are their own league, and then it's NA, EU, and then it's like everyone else, right? So I think it it does make a bit more sense for that because there is just more opportunity for upsets, and there is uh, there honestly is just a lot more teams that people are interested in watching. That being said, I don't necessarily think that's as good of an excuse. Just be, I mean, looking back, like the whole argument or like conversation we had at the end of last episode, right? But I, I do think that is part of it. Uh, but I would predict within probably for the next worlds or the worlds after that, they there probably will be a change just because it's been changing everywhere else, whether it's Valorant, whether it's regional tournaments, whether it's MSI. So it, it will start to change. Please, for the yeah. love of God. Riot, yes. Riot just tends to be slow with stuff like this, yeah. I feel like. Yeah, I mean, everybody's been complaining a lot more this year than many other years, I think. Really came to a head during MSI when people were complaining about just wanting devil even at MSI. So, yeah, I think it's going to change soon. Um, I think honestly think one of the reasons why we don't do it is uh, it's been working for a while, and it's way cheaper. Because uh, once you get to the bracket stage and you're out of groups, you only have to buy the stadium for a weekend. Where usually with double ELMs, we're not going to have much breaks in between. It's just going to be tournament after tournament almost every day with maybe a few days break instead of like a whole five days, like a whole week break. So that that is a big deal. So it's mm, probably going to yeah. be a lot more expensive for Riot to put on like significantly. Um, so yeah, that, that's my guess. I mean, that's I, gotta I, be I it. Only, yeah. Like if, um, with the regional ones, right. They all got a lot longer. When you add double elim, all of our yeah. tournaments uh, at, at our regions got way longer. And we're playing on like Tuesdays or Thursdays and Fridays and stuff like this too. So, but you know, you're at your home stadium. You got to rent out a whole studio in a different country or a different city that's not right based, right? So, yeah, that's that's my guess. So, yeah, enough I mean, people complain. There's money in it. They'll do it, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> money. That's the thing. Like money is always the biggest motivator, right? Because it yeah. even so they could probably do it. It would cost more, but it might not not tr- necessarily transition into like more money. Um, yeah, it wouldn't make it more money. Yeah, yeah. That, just so, having more days, having an extra couple ticket yeah. sales, you you'll see like a lot of lower bracket teams without fans just not get as many ticket sales. That's true. Yeah. And then Riot will just be at a loss for those days. But yep. in terms of competitive integrity, though, it's like obviously worth it. But we'll see where. The, Riot Games esports as a whole is a loss. Like nobody yeah. makes money off of this stuff. Nobody, none of the league teams, none of the, none of Riot. They don't actually make money directly from esports. They make it through a lot of indirect stuff. Riot through skins and stuff. 
and then the teams through like the state farm analyst deals. desk. Sure, <laughs> stuff like that. Like they, there's mostly sponsorship deals and brand deals, right? Like Le- Team Liquid, they don't make their all their money from their championship winnings or selling jerseys. Like far from it, in fact. They're, they're making it off of a brand and like getting sponsorship deals. So yeah, it's kind of hard to sell if like you're getting the same sponsorship deals, but then you want to add in another like you know, 10 more games of stage days. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it also depends on like, what is the goal, right? What's the goal of worlds? If the goal of worlds is just to show like, just to have like the top four Korean teams, the top four Chinese teams, and then just one European, one NA team randomly get in every year. then yeah. Okay, sure. We can keep it cheap. But like, if your goal is actually show world talent, like you can have third, third seeds go straight to the lower bracket. They don't need to play two best of fives. They just play one best of five. They start in the lower bracket because they couldn't get top two, right, in their group. And you just go from there. And yeah, it will take more games. But they, just like there will be some teams without that many fans, like I would argue H Home on Life Esports versus Gen G or whatever was last year's Korea versus Korea, no one watched because it was boring as sin. There was a fourth seed Korean team that got 3 0'd. And, or maybe it was worse than one. They just got smashed. It was one. And it yeah. was it was yeah. awful, right? But if yeah. okay, a Brazilian team wouldn't make it there. But uh, let's say a Brazilian or NA team goes in there and they at least have their one best of five chance, a lot more people, unique people would watch that would tune in for that match. Especially if a Brazilian, Japanese, whatever big region of esports fans comes to watch it. I would say there are a lot more people who would watch that wouldn't have watched if they were just like, Oh, it's Korea versus Korea again, China versus China again in quarterfinals. Ooh, uh, like yeah. the, we yeah. could have a nightmare scenario. We've never had it, but we could have just four four come in. No, and... I think with double elim though, you would run into those scenarios more often. They would just be less decide decisive. You would run into a lot more civil wars in Korea versus Korea and China versus China in random like people falling from upper bracket to lower bracket. <laughs> they would just be less less meaningful because you had more games overall. But I think that honestly. That would happen more with that double elim. So you're right; it would happen more, but it'd be less disappointing. Like this yeah. wouldn't just be it wouldn't, one it wouldn't be the, as one decisive. out of seven best of fives. The whole the whole worlds was just yeah. Hanwon Life versus whoever. Like, but then the I argument would much rather that, just be a throwaway game. Then, yeah, but the argument is that then those days are still the same. They're still wasted in terms of like Riot making money off of those days. So, like when we're talking about like goals, what's the goal of World? The goal of World for us is to show the best world talent. The goal for Worlds for Riot is to make more skin money. Yeah. So it's like, those are never going to align, really. <laughs> like, there are going to be some people who are going to be pushing for, we want more competitive integrity in Riot. But at the end of the day, it's going to be, how much more money are we making? Because that's just how that's, company works, man. That's so, what I think. It's yeah. I think if they can figure out a way to make money, then, then they might uh, think about doing it. So here's my yeah. prediction. They're gonna get rid of the minor regions and then oh. just have the the major Four regions. Four seeds from every team. Four yeah. seeds, and then just have, uh, you know, uh, double elim because that'll be enough, I think, fan base for people to actually go watch in these stadiums, uh, you know, and make money. I mean, in my opinion, if they want, if they really want to make money, and this is just from like an objective standpoint, they should just charge more for the ticket sales, and they don't have to charge like a crazy amount more. But like, league dad, how much do you pay for your ticket? To the, to it was like, like hundred something. Bucks? No, my my. Well, my Sunday one, I got good to. Te- I got I, good yeah, seats. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna attack the argument right there. The ticket sales are such a small percentage of the amount of money they make for each game day. I I, not, no, I, I completely agree. Really but at the yeah. but what I'm saying is like I think I think individually for my school we paid thirty five dollars per person or forty five dollars. We were we were prepared to pay like eighty bucks a person, even though that's like not a crazy percentage. That's still like. If they made it from 45 to 75, that's still almost double what they are charging right now. And that is still going to help, whether it's a major amount, it's still something. Uh, I think it's, you run into the other issue, though, where people will, you get a, a chunk of people who only bought it because it was $40. So it's like, it, it evens out in terms of economics. So I, I'm just I, saying I that agree. that's really not a. But yeah. if the if the world championships only coming to North America every few years, and on top of that, it's only ne- it's not even necessarily coming next time it comes back, it might not go to Mexico City. People are just gonna go for the fear of missing out. Like people are just gonna go because like, oh, this is hype. I want to go now, and so they'll they'll be willing to put that. That's at least my point, and that's kind of because that's kind of the boat I was in personally. Yeah. But like e- easy economics, okay? Ten thousand seats. Let's just say we have ten thousand seats. 
$45 ticket, 450K rev- ticket revenue. Okay, let's double that. Let's make it 100 bucks for half. Well, then we make a million dollars. That's barely one Team Liquid player's salary. It is <laughs> so inconsequential for you to raise the prices on this that it's like it's better. I agree. If they want to nickel and dime and optimize, they couldn't raise the ticket prices. But it's getting nowhere. Like our biggest stadium in the U.S. is like a hundred thousand seats, right? Let's say we could fill a hundred thousand esports fans in there. That's still ten million dollars, which is a lot of money, right? But it's not. It's not nearly to the level of the production that they're making. And for some reason. To be fair, <clears throat> for some reason the Mexico City thing is like in like a two hundred person theater or something like the one hundred mm. person theater. Like it's a terrible location. Mexico City is one of the biggest cities in the world, and they chose a tiny ass venue. So I don't know what Riot Games is doing. This is like the first Mexico event in a long time, right? It's all plans, mm-hmm. and they yeah. would definitely get people to come watch, even if the, oh, the Mexican yeah. team's not playing directly, right? Wait, so they, they must have had. They must have really not put much budget <laughs> for their play-in stage. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's, like, a, that's, that's disappointing. A, I, I'm not saying that like it's going to be the be-all end-all. It's going to fix everything. I'm just saying it's a start and it's at least something. Sure. Yeah, because like yeah, I don't think, there is no, there is no. I don't one think anyone's. Yet. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, and uh, again, specifics yeah. are meaningless at this point because we're just saying like Riot needs to somehow, some way make money if they're ever if we're ever even gonna have a chance of seeing double elim world make more luck skins i don't know my yeah, argument they, is stop yeah. doing the world the world tour like or is this, in terms of like stop just trying to go to all these different venues and change shift all this equipment all these teams all these bookings and like choose it somewhere close to the studio that does the production like get rid of msi uh i don't know about get rid of msi but maybe like Make it more important. <laughs> just make well, it more important. Like, no, yeah. be, be, team, no one really cares about MSI anymore. Like, yeah, the only, I the only thing MSI, MSI is important. good for is the argument that, oh, maybe we can get a Grand Slam. Yeah, I, I think I, making MSI more important and also I like the idea of moving less and, like, finding a middle ground. Like, you can move for plans in group stage, maybe, but for moving for each... I mean, double Elim would have to solve that, right? Because you mm-hmm. can't move for each double <laughs> Elim match. So, yeah. I do think that that could be a nice solution. Like, as soon as you finish group stage, you just move to your final spot, and you do all of your brackets. That would be an actual substantial, like, change in cost, because now yeah. you're not moving freaking thousands of people. <laughs> and fans could plan a trip. They could yeah. plan a week or two weeks to be, like, like just go to the event and they can just be like okay for this week it's lcs or lcs it's world's week right i get to <laughs> yeah. go to all these lower bracket i don't know who's going to be there but i get a bunch of guaranteed matches and right gets a bunch of guaranteed income all right Find i got it stadium. i got it we're telling go little nos x this right here okay raise the ticket prices and keep the bracket stage double elim in one location Love we it. just made you like what 50 million all right we yeah. get a cut what do we, what do we think is fair what one percent we'll take one yeah. percent of 50 Sounds million good. That's he doesn't fair. need the money. He's good. Yeah, it's no, you don't need a right? little Nas X. Yeah. Just help, help a guy out. Help us out. Yeah. Um, we love your song, so there you know. You hey, uh, so I know I said at the beginning of this we wouldn't spend too much time on it, but hey, here we are. It's Worlds, yeah. man. Worlds format, <laughs> something that has been near and dear to our hearts for a while. But let's go to let's round out this uh, podcast right back home with LCS news and LCS happening. So it's official. Han Sama is gone. Uh, and I think we briefly may have mentioned it. I, we're actually, none of us are actually sure if we mentioned this or not last podcast. So tell us in the comments if we did, but, uh, Travis did say that core and Bjerg, uh, will not probably be playing on the same team, uh, next split next year. So <clears throat> kind of the debate is who do you take? Who do you keep? Yeah. Who do you get they don't of? get along. Like, yeah, they, they don't, don't get along. Game, right. Exactly. The game the same way. Yes. That's, that's his. It, that's it's, the a, yeah. it's a hot take. It's just purely a prediction. Yeah. Yep. He heard that they don't get along. So he's predicting that they're not going to play with each other next year. Yeah. So so, it's, so let's talk about that. Let's start there. Uh, You know, again, we kind of had a feeling Han Sama was going. We already saw that he was being offered by K Corp. So uh, don't really need too much time on that. But yeah, the, this whole core versus Bjerg thing, in your opinion, what would you do if you were uh, Steve here in this situation? There's no way you get rid of Core JJ. Bjergsen, thanks for coming. You're gone. I, I don't think there's any real argument here. Okay. Yeah. I, I think yeah. it's I think it's pretty cut and dry. As a Liquid fan, Core is our franchise player. He's the most valuable, pretty much the most valuable native talent in my mind in terms of just raw talent to compete at Worlds. However, 
because of the contract situation, it would probably make the most sense to get rid of Core because Core is becoming a free agent, mm -hmm. like it was talking about budget. And unfortunately, like Core is like Pearson's still signed. Like they don't, they would have to like probably pay some like yep. breaking the contract early fees or whatever. Someone has to buy buy out Bjergsen, right? And mm -hmm. teams probably aren't that excited to spend super big bucks after Bjergsen's year being pretty good on paper. I thought he played well, but not like a superstar. He wasn't like number one yeah. by far, right? Not even close. So in that world, I I hope we can keep Core JJ, but like business wise, it sound the messaging sounds like Core is going to be removed. Oof. Yeah. It does seem like with the way the wind is blowing that C9 has an auto field support and Cordy J became a free agent. I mean, oh my C9 gosh. Cordy J is a real thing. I don't think it's going to happen. Like, oh that's not the God. first thing that will happen. That'd be crazy. I think a couple dominoes would have to fall first <laughs> before that would go down. As in, one of them would have to be Steve and Cordy J can't get together, right? Bjergsen and Steve and Cordy J can't get together. And Sven would want to leave slash C9 would want to take that. But... That would be a crazy world. I think that C9 fans would be very excited for that. Um, yeah, otherwise, there is no argument for me either. I think Core JJ had probably the worst year he's had since he was an ADC, and I still don't care. I would still take him in a heartbeat. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah um, it's like literally, like Enchanter metas literally never stay meta because Riot always nerfs the crap out of it because it's boring to watch. So yeah. you're going to get <laughs> engaged meta next year probably, and you want Core JJ again. All of a sudden, he's going to be the number one support. I think that it's going to cost a crap ton of money, maybe. So Jad actually said on his podcast that there are usually incentives built into most contracts. So yeah. the $7 million roster might have only gotten half of that or less because they didn't go to Worlds. Um, and they didn't win anything, right, in spring either. So mm -hmm. um, who knows where the money is? I do you think that Steve, if he's smart, should move heaven and earth to do whatever it takes to keep Core JJ? Because not only is he one of the best players in the league and one of the best players on Team Liquid, sending him to another team is just saying that you're not going to win a championship for the next two years unless you get some actually crazy roster. Like, if you can get, like, I, th I was joking it last time, but if you can get, like, I don't know, like, Chovy and Lehens because Genji blows up next year or something, then, yeah, maybe you get rid of Kikora JJ. I don't know. But, like, uh, barring, like, actual, like, Korean and Chinese superstars wanting to come to TL, just keep Kikora JJ, man. Please, for the love of God. Otherwise, put him in C9. I'm a C9 fan. Well, here's the <laughs> thing. Like, I think all of us are on the sentiment that, yeah, we would all take Core. Uh, even I would, by the way, because you guys know that I'm a big bjergsen fan but i'm officially off of that train not because i don't like bjergsen as a person i think he's been great but i do think he's not the winning ticket anymore uh you know for so long in tsm they were like hey it's him and four wards but we also speculated that maybe the problem wasn't the the team but maybe it was him and him playing now in another team where you would think playing with other smart veterans such as core like, I would have thought that that would have been the perfect combination. And now we're hearing these rumblings again. You know, I it kind of reaffirms the rumors or hearsay that maybe Bjerg is the problem, right? Maybe his way of approaching the game is he insists on it and it just doesn't seem to be working. I would go on to say that in my mind where I'm starting to just theorize maybe the disagreement between core and Bjerg, maybe maybe it was the enchanters maybe it was like hey we need to play this kind of meta because enchanters are just broken and maybe core's like f enchanters y'all don't know how i roll with the engaged supports <laughs> right and then they're like no and so they're back and forth and then core had to play enchanters and then they boomed that's the biggest form of speculation but i'm going with it that's what's going on in my head right now but i wouldn't want so going back to we all want core, but is it even feasible? Because we talked about free agents and, uh, you know, with Yon and is it Yon and Isla? How do yeah. you pronounce it? Yon. But if they get promoted, was, was it bad? <laughs> was I'm it pretty bad? Okay, thanks. But we might know soon. <laughs> we might know soon. Like welcome Yon and Isla. But uh, if they, you know, they're good, and if they, it seems attractive to uh, promote them, especially since they said the direction is not. So much hiring veterans, but bringing on young talent. Well, here's young talent. So again, my sentiment is I want core to stay, but is it actually feasible or even the right business business decision for uh, Team Liquid? 
I mean, I think the best thing for Liquid to do, possibly, and I d just may. I don't know, obviously, how all the contract stuff works. I don't know the money situation, but I think there's a very real possibility where instead of Bjergsen going to a different team, they just keep Core JJ and they uh, bring Bjergsen on as a streamer instead of a player. Because I'm I'm still on the train that Bjergsen's just going to retire again. I yeah. I I still believe that just from past experiences we see it in multiple sports we see it all the time veteran who's very dominant uh they retire they miss it they come back they don't do as well as they used to because the sport caught up to them and then they just retire again i think that's exactly where bjergsen's going to go i don't think he's going to be a coach because he didn't enjoy it just because of the experience he had with it on i think it was tsm I I think he's they're just gonna make him into a streamer. He'll make insane money off of that. Liquid can take a cut of it. I'm assuming that's how that works. But that that would be my prediction. Because I, I think getting yeah. I think getting rid of Core JJ is just the biggest mistake. It's like it would be up there with getting rid of X Smithy to me. I don't think Bjergsen's ever gonna be a streamer. He said he's actually said many times he doesn't like streaming or personality oh, okay. facing well, industry at all. So fair yeah. enough. Yeah. Well, there goes that theory then. <laughs> Sorry. Whoops. I think it's a good theory if we didn't know Bjergsen's personality. Like, yeah. That yeah. wouldn't yeah. Fair enough. So. Um, even not knowing the streaming stuff, uh, even if I didn't know that, I think Bjergsen is still good. He still was top three. Like, guys, in my mind, he had quite a high level of reliability. Like, you never saw him do the Abadagi, right? You never saw him, like, mm -hmm. really just screw the pooch over and over, like, consecutively. In like, you have everyone has, like, a bad game. In a series of a best of five, but he like he never did like a long streak of that. Um, I think he is valuable, but if you don't have core, you're not you you lose your you see your ability to compete at the highest level in my mind because he has intangibles. Like he made tactical look like the number one player, like the next double if hey, yeah. in, in the right meta, right? But like that's insane to me. Now that we look at tactical and his uh, regression, I guess it would be. Um, I think Core is too valuable. To fake God, He's ascending. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Double if was Team Liquid. Double if left Core JJ is Team Liquid. Just same yes. way Bjergsen is was TSM. I just I I don't see a world where getting rid of the, getting rid of Core JJ actually gets them more money. I I just yeah. think it it will hurt them a lot more in the long run. It's not gonna get them more. For modern Liquid's for sure. branding <laughs> sake, like who? What do you associate Liquid with if you don't keep? core right santorin's the next most tenured player and i i do think santorin has some value in that sense but core is truly like a superstar player he can speak english now yeah and he isn't an import anymore like there are yep. so many valuable things if you hand them over to another org they're gonna create a super bot lane and then everyone's gonna call team liquid stupid and they're just yep. gonna, it's just gonna be like neo tsm right because unfortunately as a liquid fan like i know this liquid was built on the backs of being a winning org that is not enough to get like long-term super loyal fans right you need to have those players that represent you and those values that represent you right and if yeah. you don't have the winning part please at least keep the player part i yeah. don't think it will happen but i really hope they do it they team liquid really needs to opt harder into the fact that they're a horse i don't know they need more horse memes or like horse <laughs> i missed the mascots horse mascot something like just throw steve out there in a horse costume i don't know like Absolutely. i feel like you know they need more Dude, to their brand throw, they have a throw horse steve logo. out there on a real horse and pay for by steve yeah just have him hold up an htc phone and be like ring <laughs> ring i'm on a i'm on a horse you know i don't know do something because yeah. yeah right now their brand is you know disney money right they partnered with marvel for a bit that was cool and that then cool. i don't know now they're just chilling um yeah, they they win in other esports, which I guess is still part of their winning brand. But yeah, I, I would be down if more like teams went into niches, right? FlyQuest and EG, mm -hmm. they really had to, uh, and Hundred Thieves, right? They really had to dig in to the new scene and sell themselves on like a new niche or whatever. Like we got a little shtick uh, gimmick, so I think it's it's cooler like that. You know, it's more funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Random tangent. Uh, just heard from some insiders who know people who worked at EG. Apparently. EG is the org in NALCS or LCS, where it's kind of like your stepping stone org. Mm -hmm. Like you go there to work there as like support staff or whatever, so you can get to one of the top orgs. Now that might have mm -hmm. changed this year because you know they finally started winning, but uh, that's just something I learned recently from some insider knowledge. So that cool. 
I can't say who told me. I'm gonna get a job at EG, guys. Yeah, I'm applying. Let's all get jobs there. Uh, Yeah, seriously, I'm down. Uh, All right, well let's uh, let's go on to uh, last bit of LCS news is that Poe is exploring options. Uh, Wait, wait, wait. Sorry, I didn't say anything about Han Sama going. Um, Oh, okay. Um, Go ahead. Yeah, Mm -hmm. I just wanted to say something. Yes, I'm glad he's going. Because he played poorly here, but I fully expect him to go to EU and look like a god again. And uh, it's going to be another testament to, wow. it's totally just the environment of NA. Something about here, and I don't know, obviously moving is tough too. I think his girlfriend lived in EU, and obviously he lived there his whole mm-hmm. life. His friends there, his whole career is there. So it's tough here. Mental state and how you feel, I think, means so much more. And the fact that he signed so quickly, before Worlds has even started, means he was basically out the door before the Nexus fell. Like... <laughs> he was signing yeah. it like he was signing to go back to eu when he was like afk in the bush recalling like that it was all the way back then and i do feel bad that he wasn't able to be comfortable here but Blippo has said the exact opposite thing he said he is very comfortable here and he likes it a lot so mm-hmm. who knows maybe yeah Blippo different players not. different mentalities you know some people thrive on it some people don't really i mean same with Bjerg. Bjerg has been here he's pretty much an na resident for real <laughs> like because he's lived yeah. like ever since he was a young teen here so uh yeah. definitely i think you're right about mentality and, and being in different environments how that affects Sorry. players and then beer i do think that he's actually going to play next year i don't think he's gonna retire i think that that would be really lame if he did if he chose to mm-hmm. do that maybe he will but i don't think so i think he's going to keep playing next year and i do think he's actually I don't know if he's going to win anything or go to Worlds at all, but I do think he will look a lot better next year. There's no way he's the type of player or person to take this year and do the exact same thing next year and not improve or change something because he just came out of retirement. I do think that it is tough when the it feels like the level of the league got harder while you were gone, and then you come back, and it's something that you've ever, never actually like played into. Um, so I think it would be cool for him to come back because – we need that, honestly, right? Double if left, we need Bjergsen to come back and start winning and be really good at the game. Because otherwise, it's very, very disappointing for the legacy of League of Legends. One of the reasons why LCK is so great is because Faker is always there, still kicking, still doing good stuff, either winning or being second place or something near that. So um, I think Bjerg needs to I'm, come back. I'm worried well. about him being the next Hooney, where he just kind of like fades into inting every game. Hey, it took but a couple years think... for Cooney, okay? I, it's only I been know, one. But <laughs> uh, we can uh, if he has another bad year next year. I mean he didn't even then, have a uh, bad year. I think it's just like yeah. I, I don't know. Like I said, I mean I've been saying for a while, I think Bjergsen is the problem in a lot of like a lot of the teams. I've been saying for a couple yeah, years. Yeah, we've now. kind of all been we've been we've been saying it since like freaking like twenty fifteen or something. Like it's always <laughs> been that rhetoric just hidden ar- I mean, hidden so, around. I mean so, yeah. my question is like where does he go? He, 100 Thieves isn't going to take, or 100 Thieves may, but I would be surprised. Mm. CLG probably can't afford him. Actually, definitely can't afford him. Uh, FlyQuest definitely won't take him. EG won't take I do, him. I, Cloud9 I like, won't take him. Mm, as 100 Thieves, FlyQuest, blah, 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 and a lot of teams, any team that's, I think, not EG or C9 would take him because... He's got like over a million Twitter followers, guys. Like this guy I, is yeah, just but branding for Fly, free. FlyQuest, CLG, those te- those teams can't afford Bjergsen. Yeah, hey, if a CLG's handful. Yeah. by MSG. What do you mean they can't afford? Maybe them? I don't they know. Just don't want to Who spend knows what money. the money is? Yeah, well, the, sorry, I, I feel fine, like they, they people won't bend over They backwards. don't want to fork up that amount of money. Is what I mean to say. It's not hard I to convince sponsors when you have a million followers, like Mitchell said. That's, that's I think fair, they I would bend over backwards for Bjergsen. I don't think they would bend over backwards for a lot of people, but. When it comes to Bjergsen and Doublelift, I think almost any team in the league would bend over backwards to take those two, just on branding alone, and the hopes that they could just be, like, god level, like they have been in the past. Like, honestly, if Doublelift ever wanted to come back, I promise you, if he ever opens up and talks to his agent, everybody's down for Doublelift. They have a number for him that they're willing to give him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and they, got an looks, like, they got an emergency. They got an emergency fund called they, the Doublelift like, Fund. They have a, a, yeah. a check behind like a glass door to break yeah. if break if Doublelift <laughs> break break if Doublelift. Uh, double just sent me a text. Do I break it? Do I break it? No, no, don't break it yet. He's just saying hi. <laughs> Dude, Liquid Liquid did that. They got rid of Jensa, who won two championships with them. Had an amazing, well, pretty high level world showing the year before. They they did the same thing to their star player, right? One of their star players. So people will bend over back for Bjergsen. I think Bjergsen will come back stronger. 
I don't think he wants his legacy to end off on a fourth place finish while playing with one of the other best players of all time in the in the region in his role. Like I don't I think Bjergsen Bad has luck. been an issue, but he has still won like six seven yeah. champions. Like some crazy number of championships time, only behind yeah. double, right? Yeah, I Bjergsen's not the type in my mind, I don't think he's the type to give up that easily. Um I I, I say in all that after they retired after going 06 at worlds it's true I we don't really don't wants... know man we I really mean, don't I, know i said like i'm i'm just going off of past experiences of seeing stuff like this and while i'd prefer to watch him keep playing for the same reason i still want to see faker keep playing just because of the legacy i'm just you, you look at the subtle things right like the, when they did the top 10 list bjergsen's tweeting out double is my number one like all, all this stuff and it's like yeah it seems kind of funny on the surface but at the same time it, like i kind of read into it a bit it's like it's like he kind of seems like demoralized type thing like it and that that's maybe just me reading into a bit to it a bit too much but like i said I, I we see so many people retire come back not do as well as they'd hoped and then just retire right again all right. yeah that could happen that could happen we got we, to, and it's uh, all up to we got to yeah. we got to make some kind of punishment here for if he retires or if he doesn't retire I mean, <laughs> yeah. I'm down. I'll, I'll buy another team random ass yeah team. I'll buy I, a TSM there's, shirt if I have I don't, think I don't think he's retiring this yeah year. I don't think there's any way he's retiring not Maybe. this year Maybe. TSM shirts anymore <laughs> hey I I, I'm just saying I don't know I, okay people do weird stuff all the freaking time okay true, people true. do super weird stuff so like we'll hang see, out we'll with uh with somebody oh that's super God. disliked yeah. uh, and oh taking photos uh, and yeah, tweeting yeah. it. <laughs> More on Exactly. Topic. People do not make yeah. the logical choice ever. Right. Uh, and then, okay, I just want to say, though, if there was ever a time for Doublelift to come back and cement himself as the greatest in NA, now is the time. If Doublelift were to come back this year and proceed to crap stomp on all of NA LCS, he would literally be considered the best of all time in NA. Like, imagine that, right? Bjergsen comes out of retirement, kind of shakes to bed. There's a new age, right? C9 finally wins a summer with Double of Gone, right? Double of's like, hey, we're not supposed to let C9 win summer. All right, I'm back. And he actually destroys everybody. It would be one of the coolest NA stories ever. And I think we would really need that. You mean um, you mean he would go back to Team Liquid with him and Core and Bjergsen? Oh, okay. That, that would, would be, be a, that would be funny as hell. That would be funny. Yeah, this is the I Team would... Liquid budget roster. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No, I would I would want to see Double If versus Bjergsen, yeah. and then because I've always been on the Double If side, I would sure. and then Double If just like completely destroy Bjergsen, and then just be like I was number one the entire time. See. Um, mm. And then retire again after winning everything, going zero six of worlds again. Just retire again. It's been it would be a legend. Years. I think double <laughs> could come back, but I don't think he would come back on the on the team with Birk anymore. Yeah. yeah, I don't think so. I I think he could come back. If we're being realistic, he would suck. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> Guys, but his I'm last hoping. split was not great. Okay, <laughs> no, it wasn't. I, I, like I'm trying to forget it still, but that was a that was a painful split. Yeah, anyway, so it wouldn't be great, but if he would come back and he would be the best, it would be awesome. It yes, would be the greatest absolutely. anime arc ever to hit. It would LCS, be. So. It would be pretty cool. Let's hope uh, for that one. Let's man, that one, I, I, I am hoping for that. I like that. I like that idea. Yeah. You just got me hyped for something that probably won't happen. So thanks a lot. Yeah. <laughs> off wild, Every off season's wild. I can't. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, uh, can we talk about POE now? Do y'all want to talk about Who? Poe? Is he? Is I know <laughs> he was overshadowed. His topic was overshadowed. I by know. By Bjergsen. Oh, God. Oh, okay. Trying to bring him up, and I was like, ah. "You're like, forget it." <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. Bjergsen. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, so <laughs> poor, poor guy. We're not. We respect Poe, man. He might be listening right now, and he thinks we're disrespecting him. Okay, sure. Sure. Here, here we, we go. Poe. Even, even I did the video yet? We oh, okay. no. I, 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 yeah. Yeah. Okay. So here it is. Poe. Uh, is he? still going to be able to find a team because he's exploring he said na or eu he has na residency but who want, would anybody want him or is it time for my man to retire i think that if yeah honestly i don't think he will retire because as long as someone wants him he'll keep playing is the impression i've gotten from him he didn't feel like he was yep. burnt out i don't listen to a lot of PLE interviews though like to be real with you mm -hmm. but like he has the highs to be up there with Jensen Bjergsen, like at his best. There is a lot of upside. And now he's a native, so like, or at least he doesn't count as an import. I think if that really early spring split rumor about imports or minor regions not becoming imports is a thing anymore, 
we're going to see some really major team shakeups. We're probably going to see NA players fall through the gaps mm. and they might just construct some weird rosters where it's just like Turkish player plus POE plus whatever. I I think he'll stay in the league. I don't think he's that bad. I don't think he's the worst mid laner in the league. I just think that he's been on bad teams. And when you're on a bad team, it's very easy to look terrible. I don't think he's been great. I don't think he's 10th place, though. Which yeah. means you stay in the league, right? That just means you stay. <laughs> so, I, yeah. I think I think he's going to try and stay in the league. Whether people take him is the question, just because mid lane is a very frequently like imported role. And again, I, I guess there's a chance that like, maybe he's not going to command as much because, you know, he, he was Immortals took him, right? So, like, Immortals is like, it's a fairly budget roster, as far as I know. So, it's not like a Bjergsen where he's constrained to, like, only a few teams that are likely going to win and will fork up a pretty penny for him. Um, mm. So, I think, you know, maybe, maybe Golden Guardians, maybe, uh, probably not FlyQuest, but, like, you know, maybe Dig, maybe Golden Guardians would take him. Uh, but, I wouldn't guarantee that he have a spot. But I'm not. I'm not like fully sure. Yeah, I. Uh, I think. Um, I mean, I kind of like him as a player. He's he's a legacy player, right? He's always had some great times. He was on one of my favorite rosters, of course, the FlyQuest 2020 roster. That back to back finals to Worlds. Uh, we took a game off Top Esports, uh, but that was a long mm -hmm. time ago. That was two years ago, and Power Evil has actually just looked bad or mediocre since then. Mm -hmm. It's kind of crazy. CLG last IMT, so last TSM. year he was on TSM, oh, right? right TSM. And they actually made it first in the regular that. season. This was when spring and summer were combined, and they did make first in the regular season. And then he proceeded to just look like garbage in playoffs. This was the time when everyone was playing Lee Sin mid and stuff. He just kept playing Oriana and Sin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, I um, I think his time has passed. I do think that we are past the age. Froggen is long gone, guys. Froggen is super far gone. These like mid laners that are pigeonholed into mage only do not really exist anymore, right? Like Larson has had Larson was another one, and Humanoid was another one back in EU. They've had to branch out and do other stuff, and now they're successful on those other stuff. Bjergsen is clearly struggling on stuff that's also not mages. Like I feel like we're just past the time where you can have players that are only good at certain classes, and now everybody's just good enough at everything that. He's just really not worth it. Um, so I think for the health of the league, PoE should go. If you had to choose between PoE or a promising NA talent, or I really don't care about minor region players or teams. There's still a lot of talent to be found in NA. I really don't care about imports on bottom tier teams either. There's still a lot of talent to be found in NA. So we don't need PoE to get better as a region. And I don't think that it, it sucks for him as an individual, but I want to see LCS succeed, right? So I think we should go NA talents. If you can yeah. if you can find a spot for PoE, you can find a spot for an NA mid laner. So I mean I think yeah. PoE's kind of just in the spot where he wants to keep going and well he might not be done with Lee or LCS, LCS might be done with him. And I'm yeah. like yeah, I said, that that's kinda of, I I'm kinda of feeling that same way about Bjergsen. Uh and that's kinda of why I think he's gonna retire. But I mean Father Time's undefeated. we said this about Huni. Yep. So Hootie's a, a bit, little bit, more, bit. Yeah, I, Hootie's a bit more extreme. Hootie literally had a physical issue. That's yeah. the problem here. No, I, I know, but like either I mean, even before then, he still was not looking good. You know, I actually had this thought. There are probably a lot more pro players with physical issues like wrist injuries and stuff, but if you ever announce it, it's near career suicide. Yeah. You just don't get signed. Like high was just never the same. Uh, and you also don't play the same too, I think, but yeah, I wonder how many. Just this is a totally random tangent. How many players are just hanging out out there with wrist injuries, and um, their agent is advising them not to say anything publicly because yeah. yeah, you just keep I'll playing. Add, <laughs> it's it's oftentimes the veteran players because they had really bad physical training and just like lifestyles before the like yeah. past season eight and onward is probably when things really started improving and franchising honestly also helped a lot. Pe teams now have like way better regimens. They have healthier diets. Like they just used to order uber eats all the time and just like whatever right they all lived in the same gaming house and didn't really exercise that much unless you liked it yourself like the, these people are the ones who have the worst habits and then like koreans had even worse training regimens in terms of how strict they were in hours they were putting in, right these people were destroying their bodies out there uzi i mean uzi is a super famous example right a god tier yeah. player who's like what arms of like 
wrist of like a 40 year old so i i think the veteran players like could last hey, a lot longer if they had i have better... i have i am almost 40 and i have wrists i'm not that yes bad. but if you, were, if you had wrists <laughs> yeah, like you, you play have right Yumi. now at the age of 20 that's, that's a problem right, right? yeah it's Uzi always gonna be, be a problem so good pros play yumi alistair uh, yeah. yeah, not Uzi, as much as Yumi. <laughs> See, Uzi well, plays Vayne. You play Yumi. You're not the same. Right? We're it's not the same. Like... It's the same thing. Uh, Anyways, yeah. go ahead, Kevin. Sorry. <laughs> no, I, I, I don't think his time is over per se, but yes, there might just not be the desire for him. And that minor region thing might also just come to hurt him. There might just be minor region mid laners that are better or yeah. at least more worth the risk because he's more of a known quantity. Honestly, Dude, they he could... should join the French yeah. League like uh, Reckless and Cody Sun. That's the move. Yeah, I do. He's German, That's I think... though. He's German. Okay, and Cody, Cody's son's not French either. Neither is Reckless. No, no, no. That, it's not a question of him being American yeah. that's the issue or not French. It's the question of him being German. German. There's a... I don't know if you've okay, read yeah, a history okay. book before. Oh, no, uh, yeah, not, okay. I, it, it took me... It's yeah, a little I harder. I, I see what it's you okay. mean. Okay, it's, okay. You yeah, know, fair it's enough. League, whatever, you know. Yeah, League fans don't, don't know history league, or fine. geography for that matter. It's fine, yeah. Uh, I will say, yeah, I do think, okay, especially with K-Corp uh, being moved into LEC, and that's where actually Han Sama is going. Like, where is Reckless is going to go is a big question. And it does seem like <laughs> it kind of worked out for, like, Reckless and other people and uh, Visa Chachi and stuff, who instead of going, oh, and um, Doublelift also said this on one of his uh, podcasts slash, I think maybe just co-streams, where instead of being a top player going on a bottom team and just not going to worlds you do you should probably go to another region that's smaller and just be the best there and then actually make it to worlds i think that's what they were saying on the co-stream that's what i've heard also and that's what i personally think is better for your career so if you are someone like poe or spika and you can't get on a top na team or even bjergsen right you can't get on a top na team for some reason or you don't like your odds options or like you're basically maybe you're taking a huge pay cut to just be on like a fifth place team or something like that along those lines it's maybe better to just guarantee you go to Worlds on another team, on a minor region. Um, so a lot of EU players have already done that before. A lot of NA players have done that before. I, I think we might see some actual players do that. And that's crazy to me. That is wild. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, could, we could see so many players just randomly in our in our URLs. And if they don't choose that, right, don't they just disappear into non-existence, right? Both sneak, Sneaky and Doublelift have refused offers to come back to league because they just weren't good enough teams. And they yeah. said, the reason is I would rather be not on a team than be on a bad team or a middle of the pack team. It, it's bad for my reputation. So yeah. 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 I think, I mean, leaving. going back to like how, you know, nobody wanting POE, I think that's the thing. Like we've already seen his, his upside potential. He's not going to get any better. Right. So there's no point. And yeah, the LCS might be done with him, but I mean, I don't think that would be the case with Bjergsen. Bjerg the league still wants Bjergsen. Him and him and uh, him and Poe are on a different wavelength as far as that goes. But uh, I I hope that I hope the best for him because he he has been a, a a great player, entertaining player, especially with his builds and just some of the things that he does. And he's <laughs> had some crazy storylines, some crazy comebacks on teams. He literally was the savior, right? So. Uh, wishing him all the best and, and hopefully he can, he can land a team. But unfortunately I don't think it's the best for the LCS as far as improving goes. Um, okay. Is there any, uh, final thoughts or anything, uh, before we wrap things up? Uh, you know, it's funny because even when there's no games to recap, we can always find things to talk about. It's always fun to di digest and dissect yeah. all the things happening, but any final thoughts? Yeah, League is uh, very dense. There's always a lot to talk to, a lot of things to talk about. There's always yeah. storylines. One interesting storyline yep. that I think was kind of cool was um, for all of our regional championships, LCK, LPL, LEC, and LCS, um, it was really a different summer. It was very different. Uh, I'll start with LCK. Uh, Chovy, Ruler, Lehens, and to a lesser extent, Doran, they all won their first title against Faker. Um that mm. has been something that has yeah. plagued all these players for many, many years throughout their entire careers is they can never actually get across the finish line and beat Faker in the finals. So they get their LCK title. It's a great just, you know, it just took enough time. It just took years. <laughs> but then they're yeah. finally able to get there. Uh, and now Genji is considered one of the uh, world's favorites. Same thing happened in uh, LPL, sort of, to a lesser extent. But JNG winning 
It hasn't been since 2020 since they've been relevant. Now they're back as the first seed instead of second seed at Worlds, looking to get a title of their own. That's really exciting. I think um, LEC, also one of the crazier storylines, is Rogue winning their first title. It really is just a crazy storyline for so many players on that team. Odoame and Larson have honestly been chasing titles for like over half a decade, like for so, so long. And it's always losing to G2 and Fnatic. In fact, they're only the fourth organization to ever win LEC behind Fnatic wow. G2 and Alliance. So um, congrats to those longstanding players. Malrang, their jungler, who I love, obviously played the J4 with Phase Rush. He was on the infamous 018 Jin Air team in LCK. Like, what a comeback story for that is to literally have the worst possible record <laughs> being last place to winning uh, in LEC. So, uh, and then finally, NA, LCS, Cloud9. We actually managed to win our first title in summer for Cloud9. And I think that's really crazy because uh, they're one of the best teams. They've never missed a finals, um, but they've always been second to a different team, TL or EG or 100 Thieves or TSM. Or TSM but finally... Yeah. They are the best, uh, and they are coming as our number one seed for the very first time in a long time. Yeah. Jensen winning his first title with the org. Um, Zven, I mean, winning he, his first title it, in NA. No, Zven has won uh, another title in uh, on Cloud Nine before. before oh, right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. summer yeah. title. You're right. But still, it's like it's pretty crazy though that like Zven just keeps winning stuff or getting very close to winning stuff. Yeah. So. I think it's a really cool storyline. We had all of our sort of underdogs, sort of our lesser knowns, overcome what is usually the first place narrative, right? Baker, G2 Caps, yeah. you know, some other team that's not Cloud9 in summer. So I think it's really exciting that uh, we got that. And we're going to have a very different worlds this year. With Could just end up being the same in the end. But the going into it is different. So yeah. that is cool. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Could could very well just end up the same. But you're right. That is very cool. Uh, just around the globe, uh, how mm -hmm. it seems like the theme is out with the old in with the new, like even with the CEOs out with the old CEOs and in with like the new. <laughs> <laughs> it's like so. in with the new, but it's just it's actually just old people who just never win that they're winning now so it's yeah. kind of weird it's because it's a lot of people have been here for a super long time that's true you're right but yeah. they just never win they just yeah uh, now they are so it's really cool interesting yeah. i like that i like that uh mm -hmm. any other final thoughts that was good okay cool oh, well this was really good that was a good one man yeah, i am glad you brought that up <laughs> we should we should we should do this more often i think uh yes. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> all right well that is gonna wrap things up uh it's gonna be exciting i can't wait to watch the playing stages and just get into this thing because uh it's gonna be it more league and i'm ready to see it uh this is like the final last part of the season of the year so I'm just ready to get it started and see all the hype around it. But thank you again to my awesome friends and co-hosts, Kevin, Mitchell, and Alistair for all their wise insights. Uh, but until next time, enjoy your climb on the rift. Try not to be too toxic. And we'll see you all in the next episode. Peace.